Bloomberg joins us at 718 here on the Big 550 KTRS. He is our legal analyst, a professor at the St. Louis University School of Law. Uh, the process of voir dire started yesterday on the Governor Greitens trial here in St. Louis. Um, I don't know that a lot of people fully understand. It's from the Latin. Um, shoot. I, to speak the truth. Thank you very much. To speak the truth. And that's what it's all about, is getting a group of your peers and sorting them out. There were 160 people who were called for the pool. And although it was a slow day, it almost sounds like Judge Burleson is saying, you know, we may end up at the end of the day to have a, have a jury impaneled. As, as the saying goes, Doug, it's going to happen. Yeah. And I think uh, Judge Burleson, to his credit, hats off to him, made a lot of progress yesterday. The core of voir dire, jury selection, um, is very simple. To identify bias or prejudice in the members of the jury pool. There, uh, Judge Burleson, summer, as you said, Doug, summoned 160. So what, what primarily the lawyers, with his oversight, are attempting to do is to identify which prospective jurors in that pool have bias or prejudice that should exclude them from the jury. And each side is trying to massage the jury selections that would fit their particular aspect oh of the case. Oh, my goodness. You are so right. <clears throat> goodness gracious. It, uh, it has become almost a, a science. It used to be an art form, perhaps, back in the 19th and early 20th centuries. It is now a science of of jury selection, but <clears throat> so each side uh, is is seeking to identify not core bias or prejudice w that would exclude the jurors, but uh, that might help help uh, help them. I think the other the other important thing to recognize, uh, Doug and Kelly, is that jury uh, selection, while Judge Burleson will will preside over it with an iron hand, it's largely done by the lawyers. Uh, the, the prosecution uh, begins a, a series of questions and then the defense, and occasionally the judge will, will uh, ask his own questions, but it, it almost entirely, in the ordinary circumstances, is done by the lawyers. Can you take, take, it through, take us through uh, the process? So, you know, they, they start questioning people, and then the prosecution and the defense they both must agree on this on this person and who well, makes the final decision ultimately it's the judge the uh, the the basic steps go like this Kelly a a pool is identified uh, from usually the voter rolls and it's hundred and sixty mm -hmm. in this case they are given a questionnaire um, and one of the reasons for the questionnaire uh, is to identify uh, those uh, prospective jurors who have uh, a horrible conflict and the, the Missouri statutes provide for example if if one of us was a caregiver for an elderly relative uh, the statute allows us to be excused mm -hmm. we, we don't need to ser serve so that questionnaire provides a lot of help then they will take I think Judge Burleson took them in groups of 40 and the prosecution will begin to ask questions of various prospective jurors in that group, and then the uh, defense will ask questions. At some point along the way then, uh, both sides can ask that jurors be, or prospective jurors be dismissed for cause. And so you can, either side can have as many for cause requests as they can. And the four cause, uh, it's identified in the statute. They have, my words, not the statutes, an irretrievable bias. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you, there was a report in the Post-Dispatch that there were several that said, look, he's guilty. Right. Uh, he's got the money. Well, okay, then they are dismissed for cause. Then each side, when that's all over with, Doug and Kelly, each side has what are called preemptory challenges. And Doug, back to your earlier question, that's where the real strategy starts. Because these come are in. the strikes. In other words, these each side strikes. has strikes. They have a certain number of strikes. Each that side in this trial has six strikes. Okay. Preemptory challenges, 
And that, again, Doug in my colloquy a moment ago, that's where the real strategy comes in. You know, the prosecution will say, golly, gee whiz, juror number 89, I think she would really be favorably disposed to the defendant. We're going to exercise one of our preemptory strikes. If they can't get her dismissed for cause, yeah. we're going to exercise one of our preemptory strikes. Do, are there times that both the prosecution and defense huddle, they're, they're not too thrilled about a particular candidate, and say the prosecution will go to the defense, look, We'll take the hit on this one if you'll let us have one later on down the road. Is there any conversation cross aisle? I think that would be highly unusual. Yeah, okay. uh, I think uh, that the strategy that either side, in a criminal or civil trial, Doug, mm -hmm. um, that a strategy that either side deploys on preemptory challenges, they usually keep it pretty close to the best. You know, the judge ruled on Wednesday that the names of the former mistress and her ex husband. Um, their names will be used, mm -hmm. um, and um, the attorney for the ex-husband, Al Watkins, came out and was requesting from the media that um, we not use their names. Mm -hmm. um, and this is going to be a big. This is this is going to be a big thing for the it first is. time. Her name will be public. It, it is Kelly, and I think in the in the clatter and cacophony of the last few months, I think it's good on a Friday morning on the eve of this trial to take a step back. And that is that K. S. is a victim. Now, now, we will we will hear probably a week from now whether she was victim of a crime, but we can say on a Saturday morning on or Friday morning on the eve of a trial. She was a victim of an incident that has caused her great uh, emotional distress and other. What we're about to see is, is that impact increased exponentially. And doggone it, uh, as, as the comedian Larry the Cable Guy would say, that ain't right. You know what, though? I'm intrigued also by the judge, um, Rex Burleson. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued on how he ended up with this case. Is this on a rotation? Is it based on yes. crim So in other words, the judges, they sort of group and like they're, they rotate through on criminal cases and then they rotate through on other types of yes. cases. But it's just luck of the draw that they ended up with this particular judge. You summarized it well, Doug. There's a, there's, there are several divisions down in the city there's, and, and in the county. There's a probate division, the criminal division, the civil division, the child and family and uh, Judge Burleson is sitting in the criminal division, and uh, by random assignment, he drew this case. I think whether you're prosecution, defense, or a, a citizen of the city of Missouri, we're darn lucky that Rex Burleson has this mm -hmm. case. He is a terrific judge, and I think we've seen a little bit of it, Doug and Kelly, in that um, there there may be people who will disagree with this ruling or that ruling. The ruling, Kelly, on the, the, the victim uh, name. The ruling on uh, how he has restricted uh, media coverage in the courtroom. Um, but what you won't hear, I predict, with any ruling that Rex Burleson makes is he's being unfair. He's being mm -hmm. biased. He doesn't have integrity. What? Because if, if there is ever a... a synonym for judicial and integrity it's rex burleson i mean i i can only hearken to the oj simpson trial where that poor judge uh he just got run over by the prosecution and the defense i mean they both just got him big time whereas i just don't see this happening um i was particularly impressed again not being an attorney but i was impressed when judge burleson said when this thing was beginning to ramp up and both sides the attorneys were you know, popping off. They're, they're presenting their case in public, and he finally said, knock it off. Yeah. We'll, we're going to hear this in court. Just be quiet. Be quiet, and uh, just to make sure uh, uh, here, ladies and gentlemen, on either side is a Burleson gag order. And, and Doug, uh, you you described it well, and guess what happened? Yeah. The uh, the temperature yes. of yeah the all rhetoric this, went down. Yeah. Oh, went down, yeah. and uh, and I think I think we'll have a, uh, a a fairer trial at least from the public perception. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, for our viewers and listeners, uh, there's a phrase that could become critical to this 
case. Lesser included offense. Mm, okay. Lesser included offense. And the reason I bring it up is, if Kelly, if you hearken back to when this first started and we were on the air with McGraw, the governor has been charged with felony invasion of privacy. And there are four elements. And what makes it a felony charge is the fourth element, transmission of the photograph. And we've seen in the paper and, and the, the motions a, a huge amount of dispute among the lawyers over the question of transmission. Well, if the state, the circuit attorney, is unable to prove beyond a reasonable doubt transmission, the governor will be acquitted of felony invasion of privacy. But if the state, the circuit attorney, can prove the other three elements, he would be guilty of misdemeanor invasion of privacy. That is a lesser included offense. It is nested, as we lawyers say, in the larger charge, the felony charge. But you only get to that if one side asks, and Judge Burleson agrees, to give a lesser included offense instruction, stay tuned. Last question. There's a phalanx of attorneys involved in this case. Mm -hmm. Who opens for the prosecution, opening statement? Who opens for the defense? I'm going to bet it's Scott Rosenblum opens for the defense. That's just me, but I don't know. Well, I think, uh, I think we could pray, say, say pretty certainly that the deputy circuit attorney, Mr. Steele, will, will make the opening statement, and there may be other attorneys who, who do questioning, Doug. For the defense, I think it's probably more likely that it's Scott Rosenblum, but Jim Bennett yeah, uh, okay. would... Uh, would be the other the other person. Jim is uh, like Scott is a very experienced trial attorney, and you may recall the Francine Katz mm -hmm. civil trial. Right. Jim represented mm -hmm. the brewery, so mm -hmm. it's either Scott or Jim for the defense. And Mr. Steele, Doug, I think will clearly open. Jill for Lander's the just telling us from the newsroom, KTRS newsroom, that it is going to be Mr. Steele. Okay, opening. That's yeah. all opening for the prosecution. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, we've got you on speed dial, so stand, stand by to stand by, okay? <laughs> Good to be with you. As Thank always, you, Kelly. excellent. <laughs>